Hi guys, in my last video I shared with you my cortisol saliva test results and as promised in this video I'm going to share with you all of the things I'm going to do in order to lower my cortisol and hopefully to heal my thyroid in the process as well because I highly suspect that high cortisol and chronic stress in my life has been the root cause of my hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease. So let's jump into the video. So first of all, let's talk about the herbs and supplements. So the number one thing that is so amazing for high cortisol levels is holy basil, also called Tulsi, and it's a herb from Ayurveda. For now, all I have from the past is my Tulsi Brahmi tea. It's funny because the label is actually attached the wrong way, so it's a bit of a faulty tea, but nevertheless, it works really well anyway. So it's Tulsi and Brachmi mix, and Brachmi is also called God to Call It, and it's amazing too. I actually already ordered six of these, so it's going to last me a while, and it's basically just a tea. I put a teaspoon of it in a cup of boiling water, and I drink it twice a day, in the morning and also in the afternoon when my cortisol is highest, and it really, really helps. I also ordered some uh, holy basil extract in capsules, because... As far as I understand, it's going to be even stronger, but I'm still waiting for it to arrive. So I'm really hopeful that that's going to work even better. But this one, the first time I tried it, I was going through a really bad tension headache and it literally took it away within 10 minutes and I was amazed. The next weapon in my cortisol lowering arsenal is magnesium. I've been a huge magnesium fan for so long and you know that I mentioned it in so many different videos. My favorite form at the moment is the magnesium malate. This thing has been going on strong for a very, very long time. It's a huge jar and all I need is just a quarter of a teaspoon to get 300 milligrams of magnesium. And I take that every morning just after my breakfast. Another thing that I'm taking now, but I've already been taking for a while, is a food-based vitamin C. And I love this Garden of Life raw vitamin C. I just take one capsule in the morning together with my magnesium and breakfast. And that gives me 250 milligrams of vitamin C and vitamin C is very, very important for healthy adrenal function. The next thing that I'm actually starting out just from today, because it arrived today, is taking some extra pantothenic acid, which is basically vitamin B5. And it's a vitamin that gets depleted in people with high cortisol levels. And considering that my cortisol has probably been high for years, if not decades, it's very important for me to replenish it. Vitamin B5 is also able to kind of reduce um, the excess production of cortisol in your body. So I'm really hopeful that that's going to help. And the next thing that I've also been doing for a while since I discovered the Magnesium Advocacy Group and I learned that trick from there and it honestly is one of the best tricks ever. And it's making uh, adrenal cocktails twice a day. So around 10 o'clock and around 3 or 4 p.m. in the evening. And those are the times when my energy dips and the adrenal cocktails literally pick me up within minutes. So all I do is I take one glass of water and then a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt and one eighth of a teaspoon of potassium chloride powder. And that gives me around 365 milligrams of potassium. I mix it all up and I drink it. Honestly, it's so amazing. So the original cocktail actually has orange juice instead of um, water but I'm really not a fan of orange juice or any other citrus fruits that much so that's why I use water and it works so well for me. Both my sodium and potassium were very close to the bottom of the range when I did my last blood test so that's why it's very important for me to get both and they're both nourish adrenals and make them healthier. And then another thing that I started trying just from today is called passion flower extract. It's very, very well known to help people sleep and relax. And it's really so powerful because passion flower is the best way to increase GABA in your brain. GABA is like a relaxation a neurotransmitter. And a lot of people with high, with high cortisol actually get their GABA depleted. And when I looked at the symptoms of GABA deficiency, I have literally all of them and that's why I decided to help myself relax and uh, react to stress in an adequate way by increasing my levels of GABA as well, which might naturally help me lower the cortisol too. And there are lots of other adaptogenic herbs and supplements that you can try, but I can't try them all at the moment. So I'm going to just rotate. This is what I'm using at the moment. In a few weeks time, I'll probably try something else and I'll definitely keep you updated on everything. 
So I think this is all for the herbs and supplements. It's not really that much. Most of these things I have already been taking for a while, so it's not really that much new stuff. And now it's time to move on to life changes, which in my opinion, I think are just as important, if not more important than all the herbs and all the supplements. So the first thing to do is to go to bed on time. So no later than 10.30. By 11 p.m. I need to be deep asleep. And that's because from 11 to 3, um, the adrenals replenish and restore themselves. So if you're not asleep during the time, the adrenals will have no chance to rest and renew themselves. And I think that's probably my one of my biggest uh, mistakes because I really struggled to go to bed earlier than midnight. The next thing to do is, of course, waking up early because um, cortisol goes up in the morning to the highest point. And if I wake up really early, let's say six or seven o'clock, when the cortisol is just starting to rise, and if I start doing any other things that lower cortisol, I will hopefully prevent, prevent that crazy spike. Um, the next thing to do, of course, exercising as soon as I wake up or going for a walk, but not over-exercising. So just really gentle exercise, maybe some stretches, some pilates, some yoga. Basically the sort of exercises I generally do because that will increase my cortisol for a very short time. But then 30 minutes later, cortisol is going to be lower than before, than it would have been otherwise if I hadn't exercised. Next, I need to make sure that I eat something or have my breakfast as soon as I wake up and definitely not exercise on an empty stomach because it's just going to cause me stress. The next thing that I really need to make sure I do is take a shower as early as possible as soon as I wake up because taking a shower is really good at reducing cortisol as well. Making videos is actually an extremely stressful um, activity for me. A lot of you say that I seem so collected and so calm and so focused when I make videos and it's true, I'm very good at looking like, like that um, from the outside, but inside I'm actually like a really tight spring because I'm so 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 stressed out and as soon as I finish making video I just crash because I'm so 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 tired. So I need to find ways to not make myself react so inadequately. So one of the ways to do it is by filming videos um, before lunch or right after lunch while my cortisol is the lowest. So not to wait until it starts going up too high because then it's just going to stress me out. The thing is that for somebody who is so reactive and so sensitive, excitement and stress is the same. My body reacts in the same way by releasing cortisol and adrenaline. So excitement isn't a really good thing for me either during the times when my cortisol is naturally going too high. So I really need to make sure I don't reply to comments and I don't excite myself too much in terms of posting videos in the evening so it's it's really hard because I, I want to know how you like the video and how you react to it but at the same time I know that it stresses me out and then I struggle to go to sleep I struggle to unwind so I definitely need to find ways to discipline myself somehow and the last thing is I need to learn how to relax unwind play switch off perhaps have at least one day during the week when I completely switch off from the internet from social media, from my phone, from my computer. Also, one thing I really want to implement is finishing to work at no later than 6 or 7 p.m., switch everything off, switch my phone off, switch my computer off, and go to cook, spend time with my husband, you know, do my hobbies, read books, whatever, but not think about the computer because that's going to make my sleep so much better and I'm going to be so much more productive and happy by the next day as well. And I've just started doing most of these things a few days ago, around a week ago, and I am already seeing some results. So the first, the biggest difference that I'm seeing is that my hair loss completely stopped. My hair loss has been pretty normal already for quite a few months now, which I'm super, super happy about. But in the last few days, since I started doing, well, mostly just drinking lots of holy basil tea to lower my cortisol levels, my hair loss completely stopped, like completely. I washed my hair after four days of not touching it, not combing it, not washing it, and I lost literally maybe like 15 to 20 hair strands. It's unheard of. And then I'm also much more calm, focused, uh, my mind is clearer, I'm happier, I smile more, I sleep better. Um, but these things are not so major yet. As I'm sure I'm going to see more results in the future, but my hair loss is the main thing. And my skin is much happier and much smoother. 
as well. So these are all the things I'm doing and I will definitely be making more videos about high cortisol, low cortisol, adrenal fatigue and all of those topics in the future sprinkled here and there. So definitely keep an eye out. And I'm going to go make a huge cup of holy basil tea right now because I really need to unwind and relax after filming this video. So thanks for watching. Bye.